Well, I think the biggest thing is like when you know crypto exists, it's hard to just sit there and play with, do absolutely nothing with yeah. with index funds. I'll buy and so, AT&T stock for its 3% yeah, I mean, dividend. it's just- uh, it's, it's 6%? It, it's, <laughs> it feels- Really? That's pretty good. It feels obsolete. And then you- uh, He's got a hard dividend. You, <laughs> yeah. You, you step into hard. the world of crypto and you have to worry about privacy. For the first time ever. So let's talk wow. about He's back. <laughs> Look nice. at him. things that you never thought that you would have to care about. This beautiful, open, decentralized, permissionless world. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit. Um, how do I how do I guarantee any level of privacy? And uh, we're under attack. So tell us how this all works, Stephen. Oh, we're all screwed down. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what to, to do now. Do you but. think it's the end of any sort of privacy in our future? Can I can I ask a just start with the hot? Uh, can I ask yeah. a simpleton question? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never used Tornado Cash because I've I've always thought that Tornado Cash like would put a bullseye on your back because mm-hmm. it, it just seemed like low hanging fruit for uh, the powers that be. Yeah. Uh, my question about it, and this is like the simpleton question, is like, are they going to go back in time and look at that, or is this like a starting now? Like anyone who uses no, it, like, they're not going to sanction people who used it in the past. But okay. like if you use it now, you are playing with fire yeah. okay it's like serious fire like serious fire like jail yeah. time well can yeah, you give a rundown fire. very quick on like what happened to the ofac uh and can you just like give a quick sum summary about what what transpired yeah so basically the u.s treasury decided uh hey we're gonna uh we're gonna blacklist a bunch of these addresses and basically this entire contract the tornado cash but the addresses so. were associated to the smart contract not to individuals am i right no some of them were definitely just individual addresses like i think one of them was related to wasn't there like an address related to gitcoin or something yeah or, yeah and there was like a ens you know i don't know but yeah i think uh gitcoin was in there um there, there were a handful yeah, I mean, Blinken came out with some tweet and he was like, this was created by a North Korean hacker. He got dunked right. on immediately because yeah. it wasn't. Like, <clears throat> a lot of people were like, I have I know the devs. I've, I've spoken to them. They're quite not North Korean. Um, he deleted that, took it down, put up some other tweet. But like the, the bottom line is like this is like the sort of designation that's given to terrorists, terrorist organizations, nations that support terrorism. Like you are not allowed to do business it's like how in the u.s like you're not allowed to do business with like iran or cuba or these these entities without like express p- permission from the government or like very bad things happen to you like this is like very very top tier you go to jail kind of financial crimes type stuff it's a, it's, a, it's a really really severe designation it's the first time i'm aware that the government has done this to any sort of of, of protocol um and the reason there was a big uptick this year right in overall volume but volume that they associate toward laundering yeah uh, i mean there was that one time hack that was it the lazarus group they took down like 600 million or something mm-hmm. out of the ronin yeah axi so, infinity I mean, but i mean specifically for yeah tornado yeah i mean I, I don't know the exact numbers of tornado i i know somebody did an analysis said like five or ten percent of the funds are traceable I, to hack i have one like i have one in front of me yeah uh, so I mean, this is from Chainalysis, so obviously Chainalysis like uh, gets money from the government for providing services. So you may think it, this could be biased, but essentially uh, this is a pie chart that looks at cryptocurrency received by Tornado Cash by source, and they put about fifty percent of it uh, DeFi, uh, close. Let's call it twenty percent from central exchanges. Um, but if you kind of round it up, it's like eighteen other twenty percent that are either from stolen funds or sanctioned groups slash individuals. So, um, or no, high. sorry, I take that back. It's close to 30%. That's high. 30% is what chain analysis says. Mm, chain but analysis. what you're saying is like 70% is is not. It's using it for, for yeah. the tool. I mean, th- 30% is bad if it's 30. I feel like it's not it, 30 in it's, reality. But okay. I, but it, like the 70% of users, the majority of users are probably using it for privacy purposes, not for money laundering. Well, you're talking about percentage of users. I think what Chainalysis is looking at is percentage Lord. of funds. Dollars. Dollar Dollars. amounts. So that's oh. why it may sound, oh. uh, you know, more than you expected yeah. because the, you, you, know, you have a $400 million of, dollar huge amount. We're going to have a billion yeah. dollars there a couple of times. Right. And yeah. I think what, what is numbers. unique about this sanctioning is that it's essentially a tool. It's not a person, a country, a corporation. It's, it's a tool. And it's, that's also what makes it unique. It's also what makes it really, really silly. 
because like I think they were particularly looking at the Lazarus group, which is associated with North Korean hackers. And this is a tool they used. It wasn't, you know, Tornado Cash is not like a corporation or an entity, but those North Korean hackers also used a computer and a browser and an internet connection. Like they use several tools to uh, go about this hack. And we've talked about how like, you know, certain types of technology can be used for good and evil. You know, gasoline can power your car, it can also, you know, power a tank. Um, there's like unlimited number of like analogies that you could can make this like Apple air tags, right? They could be used to find your lost keys or they could be used for human trafficking. And so, you know, I kind of put this situation in that bucket of like a technology that can be used for good or evil. It's just really unique and also silly that they sanctioned a tool, which is essentially like some open source code uh, that's yeah. quite decentralized. They, they that, sanctioned code. They sanctioned it's a weird thing. Like, like right. as you said, like I, as far as I know, this is the first time they've ever sanctioned a non-person entity. Like, almost doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. It's like they try to apply this like old thing that they do to this new paradigm where the rules of engagement don't quite fit, and that sort of you know resulted in this kind of hilarious like trolling that's been going on, where some guy is just sending celebs you know, dust amounts of or not even dust. I mean, he's right. like dozens if not like over 100 celebs now like 0.1 ETH from Tornado Cash to kind of make a point it's kind of like a chaotic good type mm -hmm. thing going on there can I ask another simpleton question it's mm -hmm. like um so they sanctioned Tornado Cash they didn't sanction mixing services right like so like anyone could spin up another mixing service where you could get the same outcome as so long as it's not Tornado Cash yeah, you I don't think it's as easy as copy pastaing the the code over, but yeah, essentially, I think I think you could. I mean, I think you'd pretty you know be aware of what the eventual mm -hmm. fate could be of that project. But it'd be nice if there was but twenty think, of them. I think there's like been torrent services that've been fighting this battle for a long time. Like Pirate Good Bay analogy. has like uh, spun up different websites over and over again. Yeah, okay, but you know, inevitable. You, you know, it's different though. Is like a, a mixer and the way it works like relies on a, like a critical mass of people to be using it. Right. So and does like, file share, but but I get your point. Like specifically in a mixer, you need liquidity. Yeah, you need you need enough people putting funds in and out so that a very basic like five year old chain analysis thing can't be like, oh, that's, that's you need like obfuscation. Like if it's just you the know. four of us and you're like, yeah, yeah. nice job, yeah. guys. Like if like yeah. one person is using Tornado Cash every six days, it's like you're not you're not hiding from anybody right like the mixer isn't like some magic thing that vanishes the money it, it works on the principle of tons of people all pooling in their funds and then kind of like withdrawing it at various times to different addresses and, and you're supposed to use like you know vpns and stuff and you, there's there's a lot of ways to get caught using tornado cash it's like it's not in and of itself foolproof and in, in right. this is what i wanted to discuss with <laughs> steven yeah. you know and it's not from a get caught perspective but more so like um wanted to learn the actual um how, how the privacy mechanics really do work because it sounds like it's not as simple as like plug and play yeah, for most people it's like, not it's funny because when when we were talking about using tornado cash i was like i highly recommend like funding the tornado cash from some sort of like you, you were confused at this right you're like well how do i fund tornado cash from a wallet like if i need to use tornado cash to get anonymity and, and all all i was saying is like don't take your default like dot eth account and then just put all the money in it from like give yourself like some plausible deniability or space in the event that like something happens in the future like i don't know send it to your coinbase and then like send it to kucoin or something and then withdraw from kucoin to a totally new wallet and then send oh. it from there to another wallet and well, then you were saying tornado cash. no you i to, to make sure i understand you were saying you were comparing tornado cash to just sending the money to a centralized exchange. no 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 we're talking about a different conversation you were talking about if i want to use tornado cash and i was like yes but there you can't just use it right you have right. to follow these other best practices and i was like a good example of what not to do when using tornado cash is to take your publicly doxed ETH and just directly send a bunch of funds from it because god forbid in the future this thing gets I, I think everyone knows not to do that that that's pretty straightforward did you yeah, I, I don't think it makes sense. When so the path would have been, would have gone like that. <laughs> armonasadi.eth back to Coinbase, I Coinbase to KuCoin, literally KuCoin to a brand new wallet, brand new wallet on the ETH blockchain to Tornado Cash. And right. that would be ob obfuscated enough. I don't probably. know if you, if you quite remember, but you were comparing sending the mechanics of sending to an exchange versus you were like effectively oh yeah yeah that was, that was you were like they're effectively they're the same that was a thing. different conversation that was a conversation on the benefits of 
using an exchange as a mixer versus using an actual mixer. Yeah. And then I was talking to you so about I want to know how you guys feel about if you do use all of mix. this. Like what how do you guys really feel about the fact that this well, happened I mean, and the future of this? I immediately thought about the the enforcement part, like how are they going to enforce it? Because it does impact like how, you know, how this changes, how you operate potentially. Um, you know, they're going to they're going to enforce it through the the businesses and entities that engage with it. So obviously, you know, the biggest move that happened right after this was Circle, the company that manages the USDC stablecoin, um, also said we're going to blacklist these same addresses because they don't want to, um, you know, reach the fate that Stephen talked about when uh, you kind of violate sanctions. And so that comes into play. Well, if USDC can can blacklist addresses, um, you know, do you change the way your, your stable coins work? But I, I think, uh, you know, th they'll continue to do that, you know, I guess, enforce via other entities and most likely businesses, maybe not so much individuals because that's might be tougher to do and and not have as much uh, impact as they want. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the first one is maybe discuss, you know, do we do we use different stable coins now? Like USDC mm. is my like uh, preferred way. Yeah. But I mean, it's a it's a it's a, it's a separate. I think I think it's a good discussion, like the, the alpha discussion. I don't know. Like, do you do you want to talk more about the implications? Do I just want to know about if you guys you going? care about we privacy. Care? Do we care about privacy? So let, let me talk to that point specifically. I think we all care about privacy. And first of all, like none of us want to know how much money anyone has. Like nobody, like none of us give a fuck about that. I actually like would prefer not to know. So like in, in that simple framework, like as easy as me transferring from crypto CFA.eth or you transfer from Amazon.eth to another wallet, is is probably removed enough to just avoid that problem and and maybe you can go like two steps like if, if you just want to avoid people knowing how much money you have i think that's that's probably sufficient because like nobody knows who uh this wallet address is assigned to that you sent you know 50 ETH over to yeah i whatever. think i think i'm kind of in that camp like i assume the irs is going to have some tools to you know figure out what what you owe eventually, you know, I'm sure they're engaging Palantir to like, you know, figure this stuff out on a massive scale. So like, I'm just going to assume that like, whether it's in two years or five years or seven years, like that information will be able to be figured out. So, you know, in terms of privacy, I think it's just, I, I don't really want everyone to know how much I have, mm -hmm. which is why it's spread across so wallets. Is, but this is what I'm saying. And then the IRS, well. I don't really care about. I'm not, you know, trying to invade anything. And then yeah, I don't think any other, I'm not doing anything bad. So yeah, I, I think the only person or entity that should know, like, should be the IRS. And you kind of, I personally want that to be a closed loop where, like, it's truly private between myself and the government and that's it. But, like, to have all this stuff, to have chain analysis out there and to have future companies out there that are going to be just, like, perhaps making this uh, accessible. Well, let me throw, masses, throw a curveball in here. Let's annoying. say Let's say in three or four years, they're like, no DeFi. I don't know how they would do that, but let's just say it's the point of yeah. view of the government that we don't want you to use these DeFi protocols and services. Then at that point, you might be like, well, fuck that. Like, I want to use these. Like, they're they're useful to me in my financial freedom. In that case, you know, doing some like uh, good OPSEC leading up to that way before, you know, would, would be useful if that, you know, does happen in the future. That's only scenario I could think of. It's where you kind of need to be off the grid because you're going to intentionally like work outside the system, hmm. you know, if, if that ever does come true.